Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Best and Worst of Walt Disney World. Today, I am your host, Craig Williams, filling in for Pete Werner. And on this episode, we are going to be talking about our top three favorite pavilions in the World Showcase. So, of course, I am joined alongside by the co-host of the Best and Worst of Walt Disney World, Mr. Steve Porter. Hello. Yes. So, we have a great episode for you here. Uh, a lot of fun. When you're talking about World Showcase, case i mean in in terms of best and worst uh it's much easier to say what is the best as i think compared so to what yeah. is the worst um, I, the only thing i'm worried about this is uh hopefully we don't start world war three in the comments of uh the the countries and people what, what oh, yeah. I, my number one worst i will say for the next episode is probably going to upset some people oh that's that's interesting yeah. so i can't wait to see what the overlap is on it um uh, but instead of wondering why don't we just kick it off with the best steve can you start with your number three please my number three i have france mm. it's uh you know there you can go back pretty far in there it's pretty immersive they have the ice cream uh back there they have the patisserie i love the um I love the film, uh, yep. Impressions of France. It's one of my favorite little films in World Showcase. So, yeah, I, the only thing I don't love is the um, Chef de France is just okay for me. Um, but overall, that uh, country, that pavilion mm-hmm. is just immersive. I like the film. And like I said, it, it has easy access if you're uh, at the Epcot resorts. So, yeah. yeah, there's lots to like about it. I agree. So, um, for my number three, I had to do a lot of soul searching here, and I think I came up with it. And um, it's not going to be on a lot of people's list, but my number three is actually Germany. And I think this one is very biased because of um, the very little amount of foreign countries that I've actually been to overseas. Germany is one of them. So I think that's where my connection comes in. I've always loved Germany. Um, you know, I have roots and ancestry in uh, in, in Germany. So I, I feel like I've just always really connected to that. Um, and I think overall, the, the design and the details inside the pavilion actually do make you feel like you're in a Bavarian town. And then when you add on top of the, the fact that Danny Tanner once danced in... <laughs> in that pavilion and, and bounced around um it, it just adds adds a little bit extra to it but um of course you know having the the caramel kuka uh there is just amazing if you're trying to get sweets i like Summerfest. that is the quick service one you just get your your sausages your pretzels and uh and a beer there um and you know beer garden that has a lot of issues i love the environment inside beer garden the food is not is not amazing um if if you're from kind of like a more german town it's it's almost uh it's almost inedible at points in time like being from pittsburgh and spending a little time in cincinnati uh, a lot of a lot of good german food in those areas so um I, I feel like i grew up kind of on the snobbish side of in enjoying beer garden but then also uh it, it's just great walking through the gift shops there i love seeing um uh, like i love looking at the cuckoo clocks that are inside there uh das teddy bear all the toys uh, a lot of the the great candies that i got to have when i was over in germany it's just uh, there's something about that pavilion that's special and then having the ornament store mm-hmm. so it's christmas then all year round in there so it uh, I, I just love so much about it i think for me it would have been higher on my list if they had made the river rhine yeah, uh, the Rhine River Ride. The Rhine River uh, attraction. Yeah. That would have kind of put it more over the edge and maybe higher on my list. Hmm. Um, but, it, yeah, I'll address more. In a, oh, I'm um, sure you I <laughs> guess that gave it away. But, okay, so what's your number two best? Um, Morocco. I, it's another one where I really th- feel like it's immersive and you can kind of go back into it. There's a lot to experience, lots of... The thing I really like about it is the um, merchandise and the shops in we, there. We all know what you like about it there. What are you going to say? You like the wall. (laughs) I do not like the wall. (laughs) You love the wall. (laughs) Um... No, I but I do, it's you know immersive. The I, the retail stores in there have super unique items that are not Disney fied. Yeah. Uh, Mickey items, traditional Moroccan you know gifts and oh. it, it, you just I, walk around the entire place and it just like reeks of incense. And yeah, 
in magic. No, I, I agree. I actually, and I, on top of that too, I really enjoy all of the food in Morocco. Mm-hmm. I, I know too. a lot of people hate, um, hate Marrakesh. I love it. I've never had a bad meal there. Spice Road Table. Uh, I just ate there recently. And while it wasn't like the most incredible thing, it was still good food. And I can't remember the name of it. I'm sorry, but there's a Moroccan beer at uh, Spice Road that I, I really like. So yeah. Lots to like That's in Morocco. Good. No, I, I agree. So and and I do like the the little subtleties to it. Um, the the fact that due to um, the uh, the practices of Islam mm-hmm. in that like the tile when, work, like the tile work in there, how nothing can be absolutely perfect during illuminations. It's one of the the few countries that doesn't have the Christmas lights surrounding it because mm-hmm. that would go against their culture. There's just a lot of a lot of hidden detail in there. So. I uh, I completely agree with that. My number two is uh, good old Norway, and this this just is right below my number one. Um, but Norway to me it has it all. Uh, I I love Akershus. Um, not just meeting the princess aspects of it. I am a big fan of well, they're Norwegian meatballs, but Swedish meatballs in general. You know, I will, I will go out of my way to to find an IKEA and get them Swedish meatballs. <laughs> uh, and so I, I, and then I like the cold platter that they have on their buffet in there. I think it's a great restaurant. Um, I, I love going and getting little fun treats like the uh, rice pudding that they have. I like the school bread that you can get um, there. On add on top of that, uh, frozen ever after, which I do think is is a great ride um and it just has a little bit of everything the the stave church is still that like that cool little place you can go and hide away Mm -hmm. and and just just relax for a while and air conditioning the shopping is unique everyone loves loves taking pictures with the giant troll in there Um, what's the perfume guy that's my uh, (laughs) gear i believe it's gear ness geyer geyer ness I might even be getting his last name wrong, but um, yeah, it, he's always there mm-hmm. just spraying people left and right. Uh, and then I, I enjoy the bathrooms that they added when they, they redid the whole Frozen section. It's very, very heavily used bathrooms, but they knew it was going to be that way, so they they took the time to make them good. So just overall, Norway is is a really good stop, um, and I think there's a lot there. That's an underrated, underrated reason to like a pavilion is the bathrooms but i actually kind of agree yeah. like new clean bathrooms are a huge plus oh yeah no i uh, to me it's the reason i love the pavilion is everything else and then frozen is just kind of that it's just kind of that cherry on top the the ride is a great attraction and that's that's just the little bit of a, a kicker that pushes it over the edge but um it, it would have been still my number two i think even back when it was just maelstrom so mm. that's that's my number two norway What's your number one? Number one is Japan. Mm. Um, I love, another, again, it's another a very immersive, yep. deep, you can go pretty far back into the pavilion. I love the store, um, I'm, I can't remember the name, the store there. Um, Mitsukoshi. Yeah, Mitsukoshi Department yes. Store. Yeah, it's, you know, that's huge, and it's another one where there's, uh, not a lot of Disney stuff there, which I like. Um, yeah, no, it's, Mitsukoshi is the best shopping i think in in all of world any and in world showcase in any of the theme parks actually a long time back we did we did one of the bracket shows about it and i was like all team mitsukoshi if you think about it in terms of finding unique products at walt disney world and uh something something cool that's completely different mitsukoshi is like the only place you can walk through there Mm -hmm. and whether it's finding a snack food item or if you're like a big uh studio ghibli fan they have lots of stuff from there pokemon all, all lots, lots of little yep. cool stuff so there, there's that store and then i like uh katsura grill is one of my probably up there is one of my top five quick service locations on disney world property yeah um and i love yeah i just love the entire pavilion so that's why it was my number one very good my number one actually was your number three France. Ah, okay. So uh, I've talked about this before in past vlogs. Um, 
and this is obviously before the fact now that Ratatouille is going to be opening up here in the next couple of years. There, that's just going to push it uh, even up and over the edge. Yeah. Uh, it's going to make France even better. But to me, there is something about France that just it does transport you as soon as you step in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and Impressions de France is if I only could choose one thing to do in World Showcase in terms of the either the movies, attractions, whatever, I I would choose um, Impressions de France. I I think it is the just a perfect video mm-hmm. that almost almost is timeless. A little bit of like wardrobe in there that kind of <laughs> does date it, but then the music the music's perfect. To it, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it is wonderful. Um I do enjoy eating at Le Chef de France, but let's be real, the the real star is the ice cream shop. Yep. Um <laughs> it's it, those macaroons that you get in there Delicious. are just out of this world. Um even the bakery in the back. Mm-hmm. One of the only spots you can get breakfast at. Um a real breakfast at in World Showcase, which mm-hmm. is which, even better. Well, and it's a huge plus if you're again if you're staying at those Epcot resorts yeah. that don't have the cafeteria style places to grab a quick bite, you can just jump into France and go to the patisserie to get grab breakfast. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And then um, you know, having wine and champagne in there that that's all good and everything, but having having the Grand Marnier slush, it's still one of those drinks that well, since I've become a, a you know, an Orlando local, it's not as like a must do every single time I'm there. But, um, you know, before I lived here, that was something when mm-hmm. I, after I turned 21, I had to, had to, had to have that. it and it lived up to all expectations. And, uh, you know, you have the, the guys climbing on the chairs and you always wonder like, it's raining outside. Are they going to slip and break their necks? And <laughs> Am they I going to watch the yeah. travesty that's just been waiting to happen? <laughs> exactly. And one day I'm sure we will. But uh, for all those reasons, and then, like I said, in the future, having Ratatouille there, um, it's just France has so much. I haven't even ever eaten at uh, Monsieur Paul. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only heard amazing things. It's just it's a little out of my price range. But you know people people go nuts over it so mm-hmm. uh, overall i just think it has it has every piece of the puzzle that you need for a great pavilion and i feel like you know the the cast members that work there too like norway and germany uh, I feel like they're actually very actively engaged with the people who come through and want to share their culture. And at the end of the day, that's, that's the most what, Im- yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing. Yep. So what was your list again? So to number recap? Th- number three, I have France. Number two, I have Morocco. And number one, I have Japan. Okay. And my best ones are number three, Germany, number two, Norway, and number one, France. So, uh, of course, down in the comments below, give us your list of your top three best pavilions in the World Showcase. We really want to know. We want to see them. Uh, Very interested in that. And, of course, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and share it around with all the people uh, you think might also enjoy it hit that thumbs up and we will see you again next week with the next episode of the best and worst of walt disney world have a great week